in the news. Federal government unveil activities for June 12th, Democracy Day. Federal government and organized labor talks on minimum wage ends as labor awaits President Tinubu's decision. Narendra Modi sworn in for third term at grand ceremony in the hill. Anand Sport, Carlos Alcaraz secures first French Open title. This is the MLC TV Global News, reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the Confluent State of Nigeria. I am Abiodun Sadiq. Thanks for joining us. The federal government has unveiled a series of events to mark this year's Democracy Day. The details were unveiled in a notice issued by Abdul Karim Adewe on behalf of the Director of Information and Public Relations in the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation on Sunday. The celebration will commence on Tuesday, June 11, with a symposium at the State House Conference Center, Presidential Villa, Abuja at 9 a.m. This will be followed by a youth conference at Ladi Kawali Hall, Abuja Continental Hotel, Abuja, at 6 p.m. On Wednesday, June 12, the event will feature a grand parade at Eagle Square, Abuja, starting at 8 a.m. The day will conclude with a dinner at the State House Banquet Hall, Presidential Villa, Abuja, at 6 p.m. The notice stated that only accredited villa correspondents will be granted access to cover the event held at the presidential villa. The notice also promised to provide further updates as the celebration approaches. Plato State Governor Caleb Mutfuang announced the lifting of the curfew imposed on the Mangulok government area of the state in January. The governor had imposed a 24-hour curfew on the Mangulok government area after some bandits invaded the Pushid and Samungari communities and killed 13 persons. Some residents were equally injured while several houses were burnt during the attack. To avoid a reprisal and escalation of the situation, the governor had imposed a curfew announcing the lifting of the curfew on Sunday. Mutfuang, in a statement by his director of press and public, Yang Bere, said the decision was taken after consultation with the State Security Council following the restoration of normalcy in the area. He said that the gesture would pave the way for residents to engage in agricultural and economic activities. He encouraged communities' leaders across the divided of faith and ethnicity to continue with strategic dialogue aimed at nurturing trust, fostering tolerance, and promoting better understanding among the people. Kogi residents, especially the Igbo communities, have expressed delight and joy over the appointment of Iwela Empire as the senior special advisor on surveillance in Kogi State. They thank Governor Usman Ododo for his appointment and declared their unalloyed support for his administration. They made the commendation soon after Iwela collected his letter of appointment from the Office of the Secretary to the State Government of Lokoja. They made the commendation soon after Iwela collected his letter of appointment from the Office of the Secretary to the State Government in Lokoja, Dr. Folashade Ayoade. The people said over the years, Iwela enormous humanitarian service have added a lot of feathers to his cap and show his unique leadership style and qualities, and that is a well-deserved engagement for him. We join Faith Abdul Ghaffar for more details. The newly appointed SSC in his acceptance speech thanked God and the Governor of Kogi State, Ahmed Usman Ododo, for finding him worthy of the appointment as his senior special assistant to him on surveillance and assure the people to deliver. What is going on in my brain right now is action. Work. Work. As you can see, the environment is already under surveillance. surveillance. Hey. <laughs> By special grace of God, in no distance, our digital eyes will be all over Koki State. In fact, as I'm talking to you now, what is going on in my mind is how to use top-notch technology using AI cameras with the support of His Excellency to make sure that Kogi State will be safer and also better for Kogites. 
He also commended the immediate past governor of Kogi State, Yaya Belu, and called for unity amongst the people. I want to thank our leader, the Supreme Leader, our political 001, the immediate past governor of Kogi State. White Lion! White Lion. The White Lion. His Excellency, Alahaji Yahaya Adoza Bello. For His Excellency in restructuring Kogi State, bringing unity among Kogites. I want to use this opportunity to tell entire Kogi State, whether you're from Egala, your Ibira, the Basa, the Okus, the Ubos, the Kakandas, and whatever. Let us come together and make Kogi State a better place for us. A well wisher and the Chief Executive Officer of Pinlinks, Peter Chuku Emeka Onojume, explained some of the humanitarian services rendered by the Empire, congratulated him on his appointment. I am a witness to the activities, to the achievements, and to the remarkable feats of our Ugumba Empire Iwaha. Firstly, he was recognized by the Igbo community by being elected as the Igbo Youth Con Congress president. On that election date, he won by over 95% votes. That is landslide. In less than two weeks as a president, he dug a borehole in the Igbo community hall, which has never happened. And in other several places, which I have been fortunate to be part of the commissioning, all over the town, in Oworo Estate, in so many other places, he dug a lot of boreholes and donated to communities. He's a philanthropist by excellence. I keep telling you, I've never seen a philanthropist like this. He gave out scholarships to students. He is not selecting where you're coming from. He's an Imba man from Abia State. You saw the last student that spoke. If you see the roll call of the scholarship he gave out, 80% are, are, maybe 90% are from Kogi State. Muslims are not connected to him, not related to him. He's been doing his, and I think this is his own way of doing the work of God. I want to really appreciate the government of Kogi State, and I'm showing the people of Kogi State that the Igbo community will indeed be a full support of this government by special grace of God. The Kogi State Governor has honored him with this uh, position and we have come to rally around around him to make sure that we support him and make sure that everything works according to the way it should be. As our own custom demands in the G25 and we, ha we are so happy for what God has done for him today and we are so happy to be here to celebrate with him. He's a good man. He didn't start from here. What you are seeing here is just a part of it. Fortunately, he's my kid brother. I have attended two of the occasions back in the home where he commissioned borehole for people to have water at his statute, at his age. Not to talk of the people he have assisted in paying school fees. A representative from the Federal University Lokoja Igbo Staff Association, Dr. Abbas and others, commended the Kogi State Governor for the appointment and read out the services rendered by Iweha Empire before his appointment. This appointment has come in good time and the Governor is so wise to have chosen this portfolio for him at a time that the Igbo community in Kogi State are worried about insecurity. Of course, all of us are aware when the Igbo people try to protest and the governor thought that it is important to bring in one of our own to contribute to the security of the state. I think this is very wonderful and we must give him some kudos. We, are at, we at Fulisa, we are very, very happy because, don't mind his size, um, it, it's just more than 10 men in one. Um, so when... The, yeah, so when the, the, the Fulisa Association was about to die, he single-handedly tried to reactivate it. And now it is in his top form. So we owe him so much.
for all the contributions he has made towards reviving that association. And not only the staff association, the students, Igbo students at Federal University, Lokoja, he is their patron and has done so much to encourage them. He has done so much to bring them closer to Igbo and to Igbo culture, Igbo roots. And we are so proud of him. Based on his humanitarian service, most special Lokoja student is not left out. The celebrant is the president of Igbo Youth Congress, Kogi State, and I happen to be one of the executive. I want to thank the government of Kogi State for selecting my president as the SSA to the surveillance, to surveillance in to Kogi State government. So I want to say that um, Kogi State has done well by select selecting him, and I know that he will do even more than expected. He's done a lot for us. He's an evil man, but I would say it's God that brought him to our community. He has dug a, a, a borehole for us, and to, of which today we are enjoying. We never got any borehole, it is him that started. So that is why we are here uh, to happy with him. We are grateful because the governor has done marvelously putting a round peg in a round hole. When I saw this appointment, I said, yes, His Excellency Alahad Yusman Ododo has the eagle eye. reason why I said he has the eagle eye, this man is a man of ability and capability. He's a man who do things not because of what he wants to gain. I know many of our students who have been given scholarship through him and which he has pledged to do more for the non-indigenous student. Iwe Ha Empire, a philanthropist who hails from Abia State, offered a year scholarship to the children of four journalists present at the event to various public tertiary institutions within the country. I am Faith Abdugafar reporting for MSC TV. DCI FIWO distributes rice to vulnerable in society. Dual Care and HIV Prevention Initiative in conjunction with Folasha Day Ayua Day Initiative for Widows and Orphans, FIWO, at the weekend distributed rice to the vulnerable groups in the society. Performing the distribution, Roslyn Alabi, Executive Director of Dual Care Initiative, urged well meaning Nigerians to show support for the vulnerable in the society. Alabi gave the charge in Lokoja while distributing bags of rice donated by Folashade Ayuade Initiative for Widows and Orphans, FIWO. She also expressed appreciation to Dr. Folashade Arike Ayuade for her support and praise her for her untireless contributions to the support of widows and orphans in the society. Alabi called for prayers for the founder of FIWO, praise her for catering for widows and in the payment of school fees for orphans in the society. The new minimum wage talks between the federal government and organized labor are expected to end on Monday as the Nigerian Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress leaders await President Bola Stenibu's decision on their 250,000 offer. The labor leaders are given a Monday deadline for the conclusion of talks on the new minimum wage. Last Friday, the Tripartite Committee on National Minimum Wage concluded its meeting where the federal government and the organized private sector agreed on 62,000 naira while labor demanded 250,000 naira. However, the Nigerian governor Forome in a statement said any minimum wage higher than 60,000 naira was not sustainable. Speaking with newsmen, Labour leaders noted that the parties were waiting for the president to decide on the proposal presented by the Tripartite Committee. The Labour leaders would hold their National Executive Council meeting where a decision on the strike will be taken on their return from Geneva based on the feedback from the president. And on politics. The 2023 presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, has said, contrary to the claims in circulation, President Bola Tinubu immensely benefited from his goodwill. Atiku said Tinubu's political career might have been terminated while he was governor of Lagos State in the early part of the Fourth Republic. Vice President Kashim Shatima had earlier stated that both Atiku and the National Security Advisor Nuru Badu 
once benefited from Tinubu's political support during their times of persecution. Reacting through a statement by his media advisor, Paul Ibe, said Shatima goofed, adding that, truth be told, it was Tinubu that actually benefited immensely from Atiku's goodwill. The former vice president stated that without his support, Tinubu would not have enjoyed his tenure as Lagos state governor and might have been impeached. Atiku urged Shatima to avoid commenting on topics about which he had little or no knowledge. A chieftain of the All Progressive Congress, APC in Edo State, Chief Francis Enigbeneki, has dumped the party. Enigbeneki, who holds the position of the state vice chairman within the party, expressed that recent developments within the party at both the local government level and in Edo State contradicted its fundamental principles and values. He disclosed this in a resignation letter dated June 8. This political shake-up occurred a few months before the gubernatorial election in Edo State, scheduled for September 21st. In his letter, which was directed to the APC ward chairman in Opoji, Esson, central local government area of Edo State, Enigbeneki, the Uzoya of Esson land, emphasized that the party's tragedy compelled him to thoroughly assess his political future in Edo State and determine the appropriate course of action. Enigbeneke said his announcement followed a consultation with his family, friends and political associate, which informed his decision to formally notify the party of his resignation from APC membership and relinquish his esteemed role as the state vice chairman. We go on a short break now. We'll be right back. It's not new again to say health is wealth. We all know that's true, but do you know when to check your health status? Do you care to learn about living healthy and bright? Who to turn to when you're feeling not quite right? Join Health Med Info for answers and insights to keep you in prime time on YouTube channel, Malachi TV, Facebook pages, MLC TV, MLC TV 2, Instagram, MLC TV 2021, X under Malachi TV and TikTok. Malachi underscore TV. Don't miss this valuable info on your way to help you live your best life every single day. Welcome back. And on crime. In a significant crackdown on criminal activities within the Federal Capital Territory FCT, Abuja, the police have arrested four suspected members of the notorious kidnapping syndicate known as My One Million. The arrests which occurred following a coordinated raid on Friday were conducted at the Gidon Dago and Kweti Forest in Kaduna State, adjacent to the FCT. According to FCT Police Public Relations Officer SP Josephine Ader, the apprehended suspects include two ex-convicts, Muhammad Muhammad and Noura Abdullahi, alongside Yahya Abubrakar and Umar Aliyu. They were nabbed during an operation involving the FCT Police Command, Special Forces from the Guards Brigade, and DSS Hunters acting on credible intelligence. Ade disclosed that the suspects have confessed to their involvement in a series of kidnappings and other serious crimes within the FCT and its surroundings. During the operation, which saw a shutout between the criminals and security operatives kidnapped, victims were successfully rescued and subsequently reunited with their families. The structures used by the kidnappers in their hideouts were also dismantled. FCT Commissioner of Police C.P. Beneath C. Igwe commended the collaborative effort of the security agencies in tackling criminal elements in the nation's capital. And on the foreign scene, Narendra Modi sworn in for third term at Grand Ceremony in the Hill. Narendra Modi has been sworn in as Indian Prime Minister for a third term in a Grand Ceremony at Presidential Palace in the Hill. The leader of the Bharatiya Janata Party took his oath, saying that he would do right to all manner of people without affection or ill will. Modi's BGP-led National Democratic Alliance won the general election with 293 seats 
a much lower margin than predicted by the exit polls. The election saw a resurgence of Indians' opposition, which won 234 seats. Thousands of guests have been attending his inauguration at the Hills Presidential Palace. Among them are the heads of neighboring Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and Maldives, but not Pakistan or China. Speaking as he was sworn in by President Drupadi Mamul, Modi said he would uphold the sovereignty and integrity of India and govern with true faith and allegiance to the Constitution. President Emmanuel Macron has called snap parliamentary elections later this month in the wake of a big victory for his rival Marine Le Pen's national rally in the European parliamentary vote. The far-right party is on course to win 32% of the vote, exit poll says, more than twice that of the President Resonance Party. Announcing the dissolution of Parliament, he said that the two rounds of voting will take place on 30 June and 7 July, a few weeks before the Paris Olympics. His decision came not long after National Rally's 28-year-old leader, Jordan Bardella, openly called on the president to call parliamentary elections. The upcoming parliamentary election also won't affect Macron's own job, as they are separate to the presidential elections and his term as president still runs for three more years. And on sports. Carlos Alcaraz wins first French Open title with 6-3-2-6-5-7-6-1-6-2 victory over Alexander Vav. Alcaraz claims third major after winning Wimbledon late last year and U.S. Open in 2022. The 21-year-old is the youngest man to win a Grand Slam title on all three surfaces. It is a second loss in a Grand Slam final for Verve after defeat at 2020 U.S. Open. Coco Guaf and Katrina Sinakova were crowned French Open women's doubles champions after a convincing 6-3 win over Italian pair Jasmine Paulini and Sara Erani. American Guave won her first major doubles title while her Czech partner claimed a hit and toured in Paris. Paulini fell to a second Grand Slam final defeat in as many days after she was beaten by world number one Iga Swatek in the women's final on Saturday. Dana Asher Smith claimed 100 meter gold at the European Athletic Championship as British teammates Georgia Bell and Lizzie Bird also achieved medals in Rome. Asher Smith took victory in 10.99 seconds, crossing the line ahead of Poland's Ewa Swoboda and Italy's Zainab Dozo to celebrate her first major international medal since winning European 200 meter silver in 2022. Bell clinched women's 1,500 meter silver in four minutes. 5.33 seconds to achieve her first major international medal behind island Kyra Maigin. Great Britain climbed to third in the medal table after winning two golds on Sunday. And on entertainment. Controversial social media critic Martin Ose, popularly known as Very Dark Man, has regained his freedom after spending over two weeks in detention. Jose was billed to be released one week after his arraignment by the police for cyber talking and bullying on May 22, 2024. A viral video on X 
Monday shows very dark man walking into his fans after he was set free. Recall that the social media critic was arraigned before the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja facing five counts of cyber talking involving the Nigerian police and Nollywood actresses Yabo Ojo and Tonto DK, to which he pleaded not guilty. His lawyer, Deji Adeyonjo, applied for bail, but the police prosecuting team informed Justice Mubolaji Olajuwon that they needed more time to respond to the application, leading the court to adjourn the bail. The prosecution sought to have the blogger remanded in prison custody, but his lawyer successfully argued for his remand in police custody instead. The court granted this request, and the very dark man was subsequently taken to the National Cyber Crime Center. And that is the size of a news package. Do support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Malakai TV. Like and follow our Facebook pages, MLC TV, MLC TV 2, MLC TV Yoruba, and Ibira Vabe, MLC TV. Instagram, MLC TV 2021, X and do Malakai TV, and TikTok, Malakai underscore TV. For your event coverage, appearance on any of our programs, contributions, comments, advert placement, or sponsorship, please call or send SMS to any of our numbers displayed on your screen. Join Malakai TV online on weekends to watch our various programs. Every Saturday, healthmed.info by 5 p.m., 7 p.m., Political Arena, Sunday, 6 p.m., Women's Ward, 7 p.m., Kakache Bira, Monday, 9 a.m., The Opinion, and 9 p.m., Senior Citizen Alcov. It's Malakai TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Please be your brother's keepers to build a happier and better society together. I am Abiodun Sadiq. Thanks for watching.